and we're live. Hey everybody, thanks so much for tuning in. We are super excited to have you here today to ha for how to get started with live video streaming. My name is Josh Clements. I am the community manager here at BoxCast, so I make all of our YouTube videos and do all of our social media. And um, here is my contact information here today. You can email me in case you have any questions today about equipment or live streaming or anything video related. Um, and fun fact is on the side, when I'm not doing BoxCast stuff, I am producing videos and running a video production company with this guy. Yeah, so my name is Wade Clark. I am a technical support rep here at BoxCast. And actually, me and Josh started a video production company about six years ago now. It's going to be six years this summer, so pretty exciting. And here is my contact info over here. Um, and as you can see, if you want to email me or reach out, feel free to. And actually, funny fact about that photo Josh chose of me is that was the <laughs> first event I ever live streamed That's with right. Josh, and I had no idea what was going on. An <laughs> MMA event, and yeah. Wade survived the cage for about two and a half hours there. I did. It was scary. It's definitely if you have if you need help with any MMA events, let us know. Oh but, yeah, um, <laughs> for sure. But, but the point I guess we're trying to make yeah. with all the side work that we do is we've been there before. We've We've been at the beginner level of video production and live video streaming, and we understand that it can be a little overwhelming at first and a little daunting. And what we want to do today is to try to really simplify things for you so that you realize how easy live streaming really can be. Yeah, and just so you guys know, right before we do get started, I am live switching actually right here. Yeah. So if you see me looking over here and like pushing some it's buttons. It's not because he's distracted or doesn't care. Yeah, it's not like I'm texting my mom or something. Wade is, like. Wade is the talent <laughs> and the director today. So he's yeah. doing, he's got I'm a doing a little bit of a couple notes, things. So. Yeah. Um, before we dive right into the presentation today, before we get started, I just want to let you guys know that you can download these slides and you can follow along by downloading a nice PDF by clicking the link in the description there. And if you want to share them with people later, you can feel free to do that. And if you want to check out any of the gear that Wade and I love to use um, you know, on a weekly basis, go to kit.com slash boxcast. Uh, that link is also in the description. And you can see all of our favorite live streaming gear. So if there's something that we don't discuss today or you need something like a converter or an audio mixer, you can find it uh, on that page as well. It's a nice little profile that has all of our stuff. Yeah. Uh, on top of that, if you have any burning questions, we have live chat moderators here today to answer your questions. You'll see in the chat feature right there to the right of the player. So feel free to ask away. They'll be answering those live. And if there's anything you want to ask us personally, we'll be doing a live Q&A at the end of the presentation as well. So let's just hop right into it. Uh, today we want to talk about the recipe for a successful live stream. Uh, just like anything that you would want to any type of meal you would want to eat or cook, you definitely, when it comes to live streaming, you definitely need to have the right ingredients in order for it to look good, for it to sound good, and for your viewers to be happy. And there are five things, five key things that we want to go over today uh, and talk about that you need and you need to understand in order to successfully live stream. Yeah, kind of like baking that cake you saw. You need yeah. a certain amount of ingredients. This yeah. is what you need for live streaming. Exactly. At the very core. And here are the five things. Number one, you need a reliable internet connection. Number two, you need a good video source. So video source, when we say that, I just mean a camera or a video switcher or even a laptop. Uh, number three, you need an encoder, which is a device that basically just compresses your video and takes a raw video and turns it into a live stream. Number four, you need a streaming service. And number five, you need online viewers, last but not least, because you know obviously uh, if you don't have anybody watching, then what are you streaming for? Right. <laughs> uh, so, so we'll be going through all of these in order, one through five. We'll be explaining um, kind of best practices for each one and even giving recommendations for right. each one. And we're really trying to simplify it down for you guys so that it's really, really easy to understand. Exactly. And just vary at that beginner level. So yeah. We'll so let's, get right let's start it. with the internet. Here we go. Uh, the internet is awesome. And the fast network connection speeds that we have these days, they're really great. They allow us to do a lot of things. They allow us to live stream events. But they allow us to do a lot of other distracting stuff, too. And the point I want to bring up with this is when you are live streaming, and you're live streaming on a network that a lot of other people are using stuff, too, your videos can get congested. So you know, um, while you're live streaming, any of these things could be happening. You've got people at your company or organization emailing. You've got people uploading photos and videos and maybe texting on the network and posting on social media. They're doing all, this th all these things. They're sharing all this information. Right. And it can get kind of chaotic. And what that does is it congests the network and it uh, uses up a lot of your network traffic. Right. And I would say I'm, I'm a big example guy, so I'll be giving a lot of examples of our past experience today. Um, one example of where this happened to us is we were live streaming concerts. 
and we were using some hotspot and everything like that. And the concert started about seven, seven thirty. But at five o'clock, it actually looked. You know, we did a speed test. We we ran a live stream test. It looked amazing. Like it was like great. We have yeah. great network. Oh, we were, Concert's gonna be we awesome. Were, we're going to Facebook Live. Like yeah. we're gonna. The client's gonna be so happy. Yeah. So seven ish o'clock rolls around, and we start to fire up that first band and. And then by that time, you know, at the beginning, it was maybe 100, 200 people there because yeah. no one was there that early. And yeah. then towards the end, there was two or 3,000 people there. Yeah. And our network just kind of crashed and went everywhere because people were doing their own, you know, uploading videos, yeah, you know, right. doing their own Facebook Lives on their phone. And we just were a little unprepared in that yeah. sense. <laughs> that was our first time hitting yeah. that problem, and it was not a good one. And that ha that's very common, you yeah. know, whether it's an athletic event or a concert, like you said. Right. People will show up, and they'll use your network. They'll sign into your guest Wi-Fi. So... Uh, just be very careful about that. I also want to make a note about this slide, um, if you cut yeah. to it. I also just noticed that there's a lot of cat involvement in this slide, and I just want you guys to know that was completely by accident, and <laughs> I'm not really, I'm a big dog person, uh, I'm not cats a big cool. cat person. Cats are cool, but, yeah. you know, that was a total coincidence. <laughs> well, um, Josh, tell them how they could probably okay. fix something like that. All right, so our recommendation is instead of using guest or public Wi-Fi, try whenever possible to use a hardline Ethernet connection uh, no matter what you're using a live stream, on a secure network. So not on an yes. open public network where other people are using up the bandwidth, but somewhere where you can have a private hardline connection. And usually the nice thing is when you try to stream wirelessly, it can be more reli less reliable too, and you can have more dropouts. I know, and if you're thinking, Josh, what, what's a hardline connection? Mm -hmm. Like, is that What kind of cable does that look like? Here, I'm going to flip to this camera. It looks just like this. Just, um, just a standard cable. Ethernet cable yeah. uh, that you plug into your you know, encoder, whatever that might be. Use something like this. Yeah. Um, as Josh said, you know, public Wi-Fi, I, I would just stay away from it. Being on the support side of things, I've, I've seen it happen too many times where people have that big event and they show up to a hotel, they show up to a library, mm -hmm. they show up to a school anywhere and they're like, yeah, well, they have public Wi-Fi and they say it's it's great, it's going to be awesome. Right, right. But then once you get on it and you start trying to stream, it, it just kind of turns to mush and yeah. it's not good. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, yeah, that's a great point. So a question that we get all the time when it comes to live streaming, because they're like, okay, cool, I'm on a secure network, yep. but how fast does my internet need to be? So maybe you can go over some of yeah. the upload speeds that you need. And just to give you a little disclaimer, we do have a video in the description you can watch. If you don't understand the difference between upload speed and download speed, we actually have a, a little two-minute video that you can click on and watch later, and you can understand the difference. Um, but these are the upload speeds that you need to live stream. Right. So um, like Josh said, there's a video kind of explaining the difference in the description. Highly would recommend going to watch watch it. Josh made it a, a year or two ago. But to start, you'll see on the left-hand side of the screen, uh, let me break this graphic down for you. On the left-hand side of the screen, there's resolution. So if you want to stream 480, or 480p, or yeah, 480p, or 720p, or 1080p, you know, jump to the next column. Okay, recommended upload speed. What do I need? And um, the, the common thing we hear in support all the time is, hey, my internet provider said I have yeah. 10 megabytes upload. Well, that doesn't mean all the time you have 10 megabytes upload. We usually mm -hmm. say, take that number your internet service provider gets you, cut it in half. Cut it, you know, go to 60% of that number, and that's your real upload speed on any given day. Yeah. Uh, but you'll see recommended upload speed in the middle. That's what we recommend. And then the minimum upload speed. Yeah. Um, and to just talk about that a little bit. The, yeah, explain what that means, the difference between yeah, recommended and minimum. Yeah, so we recommend a certain amount because that's what we think is going to make your stream look the best. Mm -hmm. Um, the minimum amount, you could push a live stream out at the minimum amount. Yeah. That's totally fine. Uh, it's just your, net, your quality of your video goes down mm -hmm. as you start to go down in upload yeah, speed. Right, so right. Um, that's why we say recommended amount. Hey, try to be yeah. around here. If you're lower, that's okay. If you're higher, that's, that's great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But and if you're curious about how fast your internet uh, is or in an area you are, one nice, really quick, easy thing you can do is run a speed test. So I'll show you real quick how to run a speed test, but anytime Wade and I go to produce live events, we always run speed tests at the network we're at, or the network we'll be using a live stream, just so we like, you know, they might say at the venue, or your IT guy might tell you, oh yeah, the network's good, but the one way you can really verify that is by running a free speed test. Right, and while Josh Hub said that, I would say the um, one thing you wanna do is, even before you start to have the conversation of, should we start live streaming? Run a speed test on your network and make sure it's strong enough to live stream. Yeah, right. Um, before you even get into any conversation. But yeah, right. Josh got the speed test up, so we'll come yeah. back to him. So go to speedtest.net. It's a easy, free, easy to use site. Uh, go to speedtest.net. You'll see they have the ability, once you're logged into the 
you know, the network connection that you'll be streaming on. So here we're on the BoxCast wireless network, um, but we're also streaming on a hardline connection here. You just click go. And then after a couple of seconds of registering where you're at, it will ping your network and it will start to measure how fast your connection is. And here Give we go. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So <laughs> you'll see here what's happening is right now they're measuring the download speed that we have. So that is like the ability to watch videos. That's the ability to open up web pages, to right. receive information. Uh, that number is not nearly as important when it comes to live streaming as what we're measuring now, which is the upload speed, which is when you're sending information to other people and to other servers elsewhere. So uh, like we said in the values before, you want to have probably at least five megabits per second upload speed. Now, obviously, we're a live streaming company, so the, that gave us awesome results. We're a live streaming company, so we're going to have a strong upload speed. Right. But a lot of times, networks and ISPs don't always prioritize the upload speed because most people are using the internet to download information. Yeah, a lot of the speed. time, I would say probably, I mean, this, this is not a stat, but in my personal opinion, probably 95% of the time you're using download speed. 5% mm -hmm. of the time you're maybe using that upload speed for something. Um, but yeah, you really want to make sure that that upload speed is super strong yeah. um, and everything like that. So if all of this network talk and all these megabits per second stuff is very confusing to you, here's the analogy I'll just, I'll just make real quick and I'll show you in this graph. Uh, the more data, the better the video quality. Um, so here we have a bad live stream. Get See what I did there? Stream of water. <laughs> less data flowing there, and we have less pressure and less quality. Here we have a good live stream with more pressure, something like 6 to anywhere from 6 to 20 megabits per second, right. is going to give you better video quality. So the more data that you have available to you to stream with, the better your video is going to look for your online viewers. Otherwise, what happens with live streaming is you see things happen like artifacting or ghosting or buffering. Or really, or they're watchiness. really pixelated. Yeah, they get really pixelated. Or even the, the worst thing you could see happen too is you keep getting kicked off the live stream. So it's like, oh, you know, yeah. hey, you watch for three, four minutes, your internet can't keep up, and then it comes back two, three minutes later, and now you just have this choppy, weird video right, that, right. that didn't get archived. Right. So. But so that's, that's a network the, for you. That is the internet. So Number one, make sure you always have a strong internet connection. Number two, let's go to the second ingredient, your video source. And I've got this nice little 80s GIF here. I know what you guys are thinking. Is that Wade there on the beach? And <laughs> I, the answer is no. I did film a wedding <laughs> about three weeks ago in Florida. Yeah. So that, that could be me. I don't know. I'll, let, <laughs> you, I'll you. let you just wonder. And if you're live streaming <laughs> content like this, you know, kudos to you. Hopefully you can find good <laughs> internet out there. But the point I want to make about this graphic is uh, in the past, like it was very common, commonly perceived as like the bigger video camera you had, the better you know, video quality you you were going to get. But that's not the case anymore. Luckily, right. in the past you know, 10 years or so, cameras have gotten a lot smaller. And the smaller they get, it seems like the more affordable they get. And right. it also seems like they're doing quality that's similar to that of like broadcast level. Production. Yeah, I would say, you know, let's call it eight to 10 years ago, you could buy a camera that was two to six grand. Yeah. That now a camera that's maybe 500 bucks does almost the same quality, if not yeah. could be better. Like, yeah, right. You know, I mean, that's a little bit of a stretch, but still yeah. it's, like, so you don't yeah. necessarily need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a video camera yeah. to get a good live and stream And especially going. when you're just getting started. Yeah. <laughs> like, so if you're looking for a beginner camera, and a starter live streaming camera, one thing we recommend is a Canon Vixia HFG21. And this is a newer version of the first camera Wade and I actually bought. Uh, and this one is actually a lot better. So this one um, is actually $400 cheaper than when we bought the the older brother of it five years ago yeah, which and is right here that's right which there we'll that's like the old you, one yeah why don't you read it's basically the same body right um but what what's interesting is camera manufacturers when you're shopping for cameras they do all these like really confusing technical terms and they throw all this jargon at you that you may not understand let's just dumb it down really simply for why this camera is good number one you can zoom in really far it's got 20x optical zoom on it which means if you're in the back of a room live streaming, like at a house of worship or on a field or in the press box, right. you're going to be able to zoom in really far into your subjects, and that's going to make a more immersive video. 
Number two, it shoots really well in low light. Um, not all the time are you going to be streaming somewhere that it's going to have beautiful, produced, you know, like professional lighting. Sometimes right. it's just on a field or it's in the evening or you're on a like kind of a more dimly lit stage. This camera will do a pretty decent job in low light. Right. Number three, which is my favorite thing about it, um, is if you buy this camera and you're interested in learning manual video settings, there's actually a manual. You can shoot an auto on this camera and you can shoot a manual. And the manual settings are really easy to adjust on the touch screen. So if you were interested in learning how to adjust the color temperature on it, if you want to adjust the exposure, anything like that, you can do them directly from the touch screen. Whereas a lot of the more expensive high-end cameras, you have to learn how to toggle all these confusing buttons. But on here, it's almost right. like operating a cell phone. I would say too, on here, as you can see, I'm kind of getting into the touch screen here, but you you just play around with the settings and you know a lot of it's like you just go left or right for a setting and it's just a great way to be like yeah. exposure i don't know what that is like let's see what happens when i move it all the way right let's see what happens when i move yeah. it all the way left and it's just a good way to see hey this is what this kind of setting does so that when you do get into maybe a higher end yeah. camera you're like oh i know that setting i yeah, know what right. that does i know right. if i raise it what happens so so anyway. if you're new to live streaming and you're interested in like learning on a camera, this is a great starter camera. Yep. And the best thing about it is it can scale with your production over time. So as you add more and more equipment, this will still work in your workflow because it still has really high quality yeah, video. Yeah, to hit on that too. Um, we we use it as a wide shot. A yes, we use it exactly. So we bought this camera five years ago, and yeah. we have much nicer cameras now. Yeah. But we still will stick this camera up, and it will just be our general wide shot of the room. Yeah. And it's great. In case it's still, we need like just an, uh, a quick cut to very wide. Yeah. Shot. Someone's walking on stage, and yeah. we didn't catch them with another camera. Hey, yeah. just switch to this, and yeah. it looks great. So. so that's really useful for that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, Speaking of cameras, you know, I just want to like explain a quick rule here. This is headroom and lead room, and a lot of mistakes we see people making when they're getting started with video in general is just forgetting these very basic concepts of headroom and lead room. Headroom is basically the idea of just make sure when you're shooting video, there's a comfortable margin between the speaker's heads and the top of the frame. So like, maybe you can cut back, but yeah. if like, say like we were streaming and like, we weren't, we're not, we like the headroom was this far, it would look really weird. It'd be like an uncomfortable space if right. we were streaming. But we framed it up so that there's just a nice little margin between the top of our frame and yeah. our head. And I'll say, I'll do lead room for you here oh, too. Yeah, so, lead, lead room, room is like if you're talking, if let's say someone's at a, let's say I was at a podium talking to a room and I was talking this way to the room, you know, everyone's over there, yada, yada, yada. Um, let's just say the lead room was off with this camera and I started talking this way, you'd be like, why is he talking? He spent the whole webinar Whole talking webinar talking direction. over here. You'd be like, what is, who is he talking to? Is it yeah, someone? Like what's, what's going on? What's going on? Actually, our cameraman can give us a good example here of really yeah. bad headroom. Oh yeah, if you just give us here's a, a good one of lead room here. Of bad, This is that's bad lead room. This is bad lead room. If we just shot be, like this the whole time and if, we were... Which way are we facing? So we're, let's say we just were talking straight to the camera. <laughs> it would just look kind of weird. Yeah, it would look really weird. Um, but yeah. That's like an uncomfortable spacing. And we see that right. mistake made a lot. Um, so just be careful and be conscious of your framing when you're taking those shots. Right. And uh, then this is an example oh, of really bad headroom. Here we go. If we were just streaming like yep. this the whole time, you'd be like, why is there that much space? Right. And there? even if we were trying to talk to you, you'd be like, I don't know why he can you know yeah he can't even touch the ceiling so there's way more in depth we could get into framing and composition there's right. a whole entire art form and a lot of opinions based around it but those are two really quick things you could take away from today and getting started with right video. and this this next thing we're going to show you guys for the people who are maybe you have dabbled with a camera you have done a couple live yeah. streams but you're going I want to know how to do two cameras like these guys. Like as you can see, we've got you know we've got this camera, we've got this camera, we've got Josh's computer, which is a camera which goes into this, the Roland V1 HD. Now we don't want to talk about it too much because Josh has like an awesome seven-minute video on it. Yeah, and um, that that review of it, if you want to learn more about it, we'll just do a brief overview of it. But that right. video is also in the description. Right, and I'll show you just a quick you know here it is, just kind of up close. Uh, it's really really easy to use. All you do is just touch these buttons to switch angles, and then actually it's got all HDMI on the back, and it's got some audio inputs too. So it's just a really, really easy way to start doing multi-cam yeah. stuff. Yeah, and it's fun to use. Like you can see, it's not yeah, intimidating. It's just, it's just it a fit fun your, little tabletop design. It could fit in your backpack design. versus yeah. this huge A lot of times when we get have. hired for really simple, very yeah. simple multi-cam shoots, where we just need two cameras, we actually take the Roland with us instead of our more high-end professional switcher, yeah. just because it's a lot easier to take with you, it's way more portable, and it's just 
super easy to use. The other nice thing that we like about it too, which if you cut back to that slide, oh, yeah. going back to features, um, you can see you have the ability to do picture and picture effects, which are really nice. You can do green screen keying, which I think looks really corny, but some people really still do it. If yeah. you can light it well, you can do it. Um, and then of course you can control the switcher on on these buttons and on this, um, what's the word, on the panel, on the hardware mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. Uh, or you can control it from a laptop as well from a, another location over USB. So that's nice too. It just gives you a little more flexibility and they have a nice free downloadable software you can control it from. Yeah, and I'll just, one more time, his video is in the description if you have more questions about that. I mean, feel free to ask him and we can talk about more of it at the end. Yeah. But Josh's video is freaking yeah. amazing on it. So I'd watch Check it that. out. So yeah. I know one question you get all the time is like, yeah. well, I have this DSLR camera, uh, like a Canon T6i or something like that. Yeah. Can I use that to live stream? Maybe you can go into depth about those Yeah, so let's just we'll two things. pull this up first. So DSLR cameras are great for creative stuff, um, but they're not. We use them for weddings. We use them to right. shoot a lot of our YouTube videos. Yep. Um, I was going to say, we use them for basically all of our creative stuff, but the camcorders, like we're kind of using today, uh, is what we use for live streaming. And there's a couple right. of reasons here. Uh, another thing, Josh does have another video on this that's in the description. Another video. That I would recommend watching. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> yeah, another, yeah, another video I had to get that out of the way. <laughs> um, but you can see, left-hand side of the screen, just to hit some main things, zoom ratio is a little weird with DSLRs. You have to switch lenses and stuff like that to get a longer zoom compared to camcorders. Yeah. Clean HDMI output. This is the most important thing why DSLRs are kind of goofy when you try to yeah. stream with them. And Josh, show us the next slide. So this is what a not clean HDMI, or clean HDMI output looks like. Yeah. Um, you'll see there's all these icons on the screen. Um, you know, there, there's like a zoom box, or not a zoom box, a focus box around my face. Mm -hmm. Like this is what our one Canon T5i outputs when you plug it into HDMI. So do you want this for your live stream, or do you want this for your live stream? Like yeah. a picture of us, like where it's clean, there's you no icons, icons or anything like showing. that. Or if we were live streaming with something like this, you'd be like, wait, what? Why can I see his battery level? Yeah. Why can I see some settings? Yeah, it'd be a little goofy. The other, um, the other issue I think you run into yeah. with a lot of DSLRs is sometimes they don't output audio either, yeah. which can be troublesome too. Right, because like so, let's say you were just doing a one-person interview DSLR mm -hmm. and you wanted to output it to live stream it, you know. And you just had a little shotgun mic on yeah. it, like it's not gonna output that over HDMI. So now you have to find right. another way to yeah. get audio out there. So, so if you if yeah. your only camera is a DSLR, uh, I would look up online um, and just look at the tech specs and see if it has the ability to output output clean HDMI or just plug it into a monitor. Plug it in like yeah. a com computer monitor or something like That's that great. with HDMI and see if it see if it actually sends audio over that feed and see if it sends the full right. res. That's image. a great idea actually, because that will tell you right away. That's what I would do. So next, let's get into encoders. All right, ingredient number three, encoders. An encoder is basically a device, and we're going to show you our box caster today. But when you hear the term encoder, it sounds really technical and confusing. To simplify it, it's just something that takes your raw video and compresses it and magically turns it into a live stream. That's how I would explain it. Right. Yeah. So let's actually show you kind of our box caster. Yeah, this is our box caster. Um, let's see here. OK, cool. So there's our box caster. Mm -hmm. And what you can see here, it's really, really easy. Um, there's no buttons on it, so you can't like accidentally turn it off can't unless you unplug it. configure something um, wrong. There is Ethernet on this side, USB on this side for our wireless scoreboard adapters. Mm -hmm. We're not going to get into that today, um, but if you have questions, let us know. Uh, Ethernet over here, and then on this side, this is all your video and audio components. So you can see, obviously, HDMI and then kind of composite, depending on your video output. Um, so to start, let's just plug. Let's plug. Sorry in. for taping that. Down like that. <laughs> no, you're okay. <laughs> Let's plug this in here, and it's as simple as live streaming as this. You plug in Ethernet, and you'll see that we're going to get a green cloud on this. And while that kind of does its thing, let me get the camera going. So when you plug in your network connection, there goes the green cloud lights up. And when the green cloud lights up, that means the Boxcaster is ready to live stream, and it's communicating with Boxcast servers. So yep. you're good to go. You've got a good network connection. Um, and you're ready to go live. Yeah. And then and let's actually, so now we have our camera here. Um, fix, yeah. We got a mini HDMI cable to HDMI cable, and we're going to plug this in for video. Yep. Um, and you'll see here, let me flip back to the other angle for you. Now we have a green, green camera, camera icon. icon. Basically, what that means is that the Boxcaster is receiving a valid video signal. It's not like a weird, wonky signal that it can't read. And also, when you go to live stream, that's going to 
look good. Right, yeah. So it's just and when like, it and when you are live, if you unplug it, it will actually start blinking red right. to let you Which know. Which maybe like, we hey, something's wrong. Yeah, we can. Yeah, I think we can we're show you. Um, but and then of course there's a middle arrow icon, which we'll do a demo. We'll fire up a live stream in a little bit, and what that will do is it'll blink whenever the live stream is preparing, and it'll turn solid green. Right. Whenever the live and to give you a scope of what this product looks like, I mean, it's super plug and play and easy. This is my cell phone. It's an iPhone so, 10. So that's an iPhone 10. I mean, it's not much bigger than that. So this is. A pen. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So as you can see, it's pretty small. You can yeah. fit it in your pocket. But um, let's talk about this is the, the fourth next ingredient. Step. Yeah. Right? So the fourth ingredient is you need a streaming service to live stream. Uh, also, it's known as a CDN. And Facebook Live is a CDN. YouTube is a CDN. At Boxcast, we also have our own uh, content distribution network. Basically, yep. what that means is. We host the video, we have our own servers, and then we distribute it to your viewers. So you can see this little truck here. It's like, that's what the CDN's doing, is it's taking your video and it's transporting it yeah. to viewers across the world. Right, that's perfect. That's yeah. the simplest way to describe it. So at Boxcast, not only are we a hardware company, but we're a software company as well. So we yep. give you the hardware to stream with, and we give you the software to manage and control all of your streams. And we do that in the Boxcast dashboard. Right. So while Josh jumps into that, um, you're jumping into it, I think, right? Yeah, I'll, oh. I'll show you what the dashboard looks like. We'll do a really quick demo. Cool. Sweet. But yeah, while he's jumping into that, Boxcast is an all-inclusive solution. So with some encoders, they give you the encoder, and then they make you go get your own streaming service. And we actually work with some of those encoders as well through a different method. Yeah. Um, so if you already have an encoder and you're like, I, don't, mm -hmm. I need a streaming provider. We can help you. Yeah, you don't um, have to just use our. Equipment. You don't have to just stream use our with our software. But um, but yeah, so but we're a little unique in a sense where we have streaming provider and the encoder and stuff. Yeah. But let's jump into the dashboard. You get both. So welcome to the dashboard. This is the software. Like I said, you can use to manage all of your live stream, and we're actually in our own Boxcast webinars account, so super meta. And you can see here, this is the live stream we have running now. So. If you were to hop in the dashboard and you had a live stream going, you would see it would pop up right away when you log in. And you can see here, uh, basically to give you a synopsis of what's going on, if I clicked on this, it would be our live stream. And it would be a little bit delayed, obviously. Um, and then here, you can see that it's verified that we're going to YouTube Live right now. So that's where you guys are watching it. Boxcast, you have the ability to go to multiple destinations. And then if you hop back over here, you also see if we had any upcoming broadcasts, it would show you there. And here are all of our past broadcasts. So here are like other webinars we've done in the past. We can always hop into them, make adjustments, edit them, and then like republish them if yep. we want as well. So to show you how easy it is to set up a Boxcast broadcast, all we got to do is click Schedule Broadcast. And all we got to do is give it a name. We'll call this My First Live Stream. Then if you guys can see that, I'll zoom in a little bit here for you so you can see a little better of how that looks. Then you pick a source. So in this case, we will pick the Boxcaster that's on our account here. Yep. And you can see that the, the dashboard is telling us, yes, this is online, ready to go. So if you weren't actually at the venue where you wanted to stream to, so if you were, <laughs> you wanted a live stream, but you weren't there because you were doing something else, so you could still go live. Yeah, the Boxcaster is all automated. So while Josh kind of finished scheduling here, yeah. it, it, it basically, you could be at home, and as long as the box is plugged into a camera and internet source, you could fire up live streams all you want. Exactly. So. Exactly. Here we have uh, the ability to pick a future date or go live right now. I'll just go live right now. But what's cool about this whole concept is it kind of works how Google Calendar works, where you can set reoccurring events. So let's say you had soccer games you wanted to stream every Tuesday at 9 p.m. You could set that to repeat weekly. Or you had a Sunday morning service at 10 a.m. every week, and you didn't want to configure it every time, you could just set that to go live every week yeah. at 10 a.m. And all the settings save. So if yep. you have your Facebook settings in there, or you have a certain message or a yep. photo in there, they all save and go all those broadcasts. Yep. And then down here, uh, you have the ability to select between ticketed, public, or private. Um, and then, of course, you have the ability to stream to your social accounts, uh, your Facebook Live pages, your YouTube Live accounts. You can go to as many Facebook pages as you want at the same time. Yep. You could go to YouTube if you wanted. So that's how we did that. We just connected our Boxcast YouTube account and clicked there. And then you can obviously have the ability to switch between unlisted, public, and private. And then there are other options, including Periscope, which includes Twitter. So you could tweet a live stream, which is really cool in case some of you have like large Twitter followings. Yep. Or you can go to what is called Other RTMP, 
which is just a unique way of sending the stream pretty much anywhere else it receives RTMP. Right. We Basically, we use that for stuff like Twitch, or um, we've actually used it with, we had a softball client who just had their own website server thing, yeah, and they're yeah. like, here's our RTMP codes. We're like, cool, blah, 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 and we popped in another RTMP, and they got, they <laughs> got our stream. That, works? <laughs> that, that is how it works. Okay. <laughs> and then when you're ready to go live, you just click schedule broadcast. It'll boot up, and you'll, you'll be cooking with fire. Yeah. Um, I'll explain to you while you're live a couple of cool features that we have in the dashboard while we're here as well. Uh, once you schedule broadcast and it's finally live, you can also look at stream diagnostics. So again, if you're remote or you're not watching the live stream or you need to know how the encoder is doing, you can see here we have some diagnostics. It's telling you, okay, cool, the broadcast health looks good. Uh, you can get into some nitty gritty details about the bit rate yeah. that you're seeing, the frame rate, which is really nice in case you're curious about that, or yeah. you can see like, all right, is my simulcast working well? Yeah, and I'll explain this too for you that are thinking, wait, he just had one meg. Is there? How are they streaming? Didn't they say they need three or four? Yeah, yeah. So when we, when you do powerpoints and stuff like that, basically that, those drops are every images. time we're doing powerpoints, there's still images. It's less data for our boxcaster doing code, so it just it's not a moving picture, so yeah. it doesn't require a lot of data. Right. So it just knows, hey, I don't have to use that much data to push this picture out of yeah. this quality. So the boxcaster yeah. is actually really efficient with your network. Yes. It, yep. it only uses the data that it needs at certain times. So right. it's, it's pretty smart like that too. And then when you cut the shots of Wade and I on the camera, right. that's where you're going to see like this high bit rate. So when right. you're seeing shots like this, obviously the bit rate's raised. Yeah. Cool. Shots like this. Shots, shot, <laughs> shot, shots like this. Yeah. This but shot. You'll see it's Mike. <laughs> Back to um, the dashboard. To show you some other cool features we have as well, uh, and you can look at these while you're live too, but I'll give you a better example of it. You can look at uh, some really in-depth analytics too. So you can see how many live viewers you had. You can see you know, where people are watching from, which I think people really like because they like to know the, you know, the, the more global impact of some of their live streams. And you can get really in-depth with individual live streams and events. So for this particular video, we had 130 views. You know, you can select, similar to YouTube Analytics, where you can select a date range. You can see what devices they're watching on, which is really cool. Like, oh, most people are watching on a desktop versus you know, yeah. watching on a phone. Right. You can see what resolution they're watching in. Um, so, Which I think is super, super interesting, too, because there's this huge... There's this huge push for, you know, 4K is like the next big thing. Mm -hmm. And like everything's got to be 4K. And it's like, well, m maybe for creative work, like yeah. weddings and stuff we do. But, yeah. you know, for live streaming, the person that's watching that has to have the ability to watch 4K. And a lot yeah. of the time, your viewers are only watching in like really 720p or 1080p. I mean, it, you know, unless you have super, super techie viewers. Right, right, <laughs> right, exactly. So, all right, back to the dashboard. And then, of course, like I mentioned, you're going to be able to have the ability to see where in the world people are watching. And that's a really cool feature, especially if you have like um, a, a large global audience. Yeah. You and can I see what states they're watching in. You know, We had a viewer for this video in Nigeria. We had one in Washington, D.C. And it just keeps going down and going yeah, down. Yeah, I was going to say, with this, too, we, me and Josh streamed something. And we had a client. We were in 41 states and three countries. They were so freaking pumped oh, to yeah, see that were, stat. They were yeah. like three different countries. Like yeah. they were so yeah. ecstatic. Yeah. If you just, want to make yeah. your boss happy, show, show him or the, her like the geo analytics tool. Yes. Be like, what? We had that impact. So that's a yeah. really cool feature as well. Right. Um, I get really excited about it. Yeah. But here, the live stream is going now. <laughs> yeah. So, so here you'll see this was this is the live stream. This is just a little view of our office. And uh, if we click into it, this is the one where we're streaming from our box caster. And there's Kevin over there in the corner. He's our graphics guy and our awesome uh, graphic designer. And this is a little behind the scenes look of our studio. But you'll see once it's ready, it goes live. And like I said, you can manage all of those things from here. Yeah, you can change all the settings and everything like that. But So that's just a brief, um, a brief demo of the Boxcast dashboard. But there's a ton of other features that right. you can do as well. You can download the video. You can trim the video. You right. can clip out highlights. You and can share do live. Moments. You can do captions, yeah. and you yeah. can you know download so the transcript. We, There's so many things you can do. If we had like hours and hours, we could spend all day. I think we could. We know we have time. I think we could spend two hours we don't on the dashboard <laughs> showing you all the features yeah. that you can do. We don't want to take up all your time. Right. So, so all right. moving on from the dashboard, the fifth ingredient, the final ingredient. None of it matters. If you don't have, wait, oh, you already did it. Oh, okay. I messed this timing up. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have online viewers, if you don't have, if nobody's watching at home, then what's the point? 
um, is what I like to say. And that's kind of a harsh thing. And not everybody's going to go viral like right away. Not everybody's going to have a ton of people tune in right when they start live streaming. Right. But at BoxCast, we do have a couple tools that make it easy for you to get a few more right. viewers. Uh, the ability to go to Facebook Live, the ability to go to YouTube Live, to put all of your video content on all the social platforms at once. And that is called simulcasting. And simulcasting is just a way to cast a wider net and attract more viewers, depending on where they're at. And at BoxCast, we give you the ability to go to all of these destinations. So you can imagine that not everybody's gonna wanna watch in their Facebook feed, or some people might be searching for you on YouTube, or some people might just wanna watch on their smart TV, so they wanna have a Roku app or an Amazon Fire TV app. That's really nice to have as well. And so what this allows you to do, it allows you to get more viewers and meet your viewers where they're at or the social platforms they like to watch in. And I would say too, I don't even think we talked about it, you can embed it on your website as well. Oh yeah. So if you have yeah. a website, you can embed the whole box guest player that you saw right on your site and still go to Facebook, YouTube, yeah. Twitch, Twitter, wherever you exactly. want to go. Exactly, so, exactly, 100%. Yeah. So um, to give you an example, just a real world case study of an event Wade and I produce every year for the past three years, we stream the Cleveland International Film Awards Ceremony. And the first year we did it, we just went to their website and that was their first time streaming, so not a lot of people were aware of it anyway, but they also limited themselves by only streaming on their website. Right. The second year, we convinced them to go to their Facebook page. And they, you know, it was a little tough at first because it's kind of scary. It's like, whoa, because they had a big Facebook following. It's like, right. but what if it doesn't work? But we were able to convince them to do that. And when they did that, they their viewership spiked quite a bit. And then in year three, um, we were able to convince them to go to their Twitter account their YouTube page uh, with YouTube Live, like you're watching today, and with their Facebook page and their website all at the same time. And you can see in year three, they almost like grew their viewership 10x from when they did it in year one just by right. going to those social destinations. Yeah, and one thing we hear a lot, and I know this was kind of a concern that second year, that first kind of talk with them is, well, if we live stream it, are people still going to come to the event? Yeah, Because right. they know we're live streaming it. Right. And, and actually what we have seen is by them live streaming it, more people want to come next year because they're like, wow, that looks so, oh, yeah. that looks so cool yeah, and that's draws, so awesome. It yeah. draws like attention to your event mm -hmm. or your whatever yeah. you're streaming. It yeah. draws attention to that and people go, I really like that. I want to go. Yeah. You know, like, and it makes it, it makes it exciting. Right. Best example we can give you too, because I'm sorry we're ranting a little bit about this, but I think it's important. The it's like the Super Bowl. People pay thousands of dollars to go to the Super Bowl to sit way mm -hmm. up top where they can't yeah. even really see anything. But like you could sit at home in your pajamas and watch the Super Bowl and get the best view in the house with your you know 60 inch TV. Mm -hmm. But people still pay thousands of dollars to go. Yeah, I it's mean, they, the just people because who, you're yeah. live streaming an event doesn't yeah. mean people aren't going to attend in person. Right. You know, and nobody's going to stop going to Super Bowl games just because they're televising it. In yeah. fact. It just draws that. Another good example are TED Talks. If any of, you, right. any of you have seen TED Talks videos, before they actually posted those videos online, TED, TED and TED Talks wasn't like a really big or popular organization. And then they started posting these talks online and people just started uh, you know, like flooding the Well, I'm sure they had speakers too who yeah. were like, whoa, these are cool, I want to speak there. So they yeah, had all I these different, I want to speak there, I want to so go watch it, all yeah. this stuff. So our philosophy yeah. is that live streaming actually creates more awareness about your event and yeah. encourages people to attend it in, in person versus, you know, them being lazy. I mean, if somebody, if somebody's going to watch it at home, they're going to watch it at home, right? right? Yeah. Um, and that's probably just because it's either too far for them or... Right, exactly. A lot of There's other a lot reasons. Of reasons. But let's jump into some other stuff. <laughs> let's talk about uh, some advantages and disadvantages of social streaming. Yeah. Uh, we love the social sites, but they do have their limitations, and it's important to be aware of them. And the reason we make this point is because we don't think you, when you are live streaming, you should be going to one place right. because you might want to have a backup destination or somewhere else to send viewers just in case something goes wrong. So exactly. starting with Facebook Live, yeah, um, I'll jump into that. For yeah, you. maybe you can explain that. So starting with Facebook Live, we're just going to talk, you know, we love going to Facebook Live and YouTube Live and stuff, but here's some advantages and disadvantages of Facebook Live. Uh, to make it as super simple as possible, Facebook Live is really shareable, which people love. People love the ability to share that video over and over and over again to expand that reach. Um, you know, appear, and the next thing, appearing in someone's feed. Obviously, as someone is, let me cut back to us, is just scrolling through their feed, you know, Facebook shows the video for you and you just hit play and watch it. And I think I think Facebook's the one too where it will just 
appear in the corner while you keep scrolling. Yeah, you can keep scrolling which and continue to watch. Is awesome. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, they so, make it. They do a very good job right. of making your live stream a priority in people's yeah. feeds and too. Obviously, they have a bunch of engagement features like commenting and hearting and smile faces. Yeah, and, you know, smiley faces and stuff like that. Um, but there are some disadvantages to Facebook, and you know, not to hate on them, but. <laughs> they're low quality and not they're not low quality but they're they max out at 720p 30 is what i'm getting at mm -hmm. so they um which is fine for some people but there are other services out there that do higher quality so if quality is important to you mm -hmm. then you should be maybe going to a different destination maybe you yep. are going to your website with a service that can stream higher quality yep um they have copyright restrictions so obviously if you play music or you play a video that's not yours they could just take your stream down and there's no one to contact at facebook saying Hey, why did you take my stream down? Like, mm -hmm. that's almost impossible. Yep. Um, and then restrictions on running your own ads. We've seen this before, where they tell you, "Hey, you can't run ads during your live stream because they want to make money off you. You can't make money off them." Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And then you can't monetize your content. And all we mean by yeah. that is, if you want to have a ticketed event, you can't do that on Facebook. Right. Right. So. So that those are those are just some things to be aware of. There's also YouTube Live, which is also a great platform for live streaming. We use it for our own webinars. We love the chat feature. Uh, we love the video quality it gives you. And we also love that it is the world's second largest search engine next to Google. So if you're just getting started with live streaming or you're just getting started with video, the great thing about YouTube is people might be able to find out more about your organization, right. find out more about you just by randomly searching things on YouTube and stumbling upon your content. Like this video, someone could be like, how do I start live streaming? Yes. And they could stumble upon a this webinar yeah. that's 45-ish minutes yeah. and watch the little thing and be like, cool, now I know. So it's a great yeah. way to grow exposure in that way. Right. Um, only a couple of disadvantages to be aware of is they can put ads on your content, and sometimes those can be awkward or inappropriate, right. or they may not vibe with the message of your organization or the message of your brand. So be aware of that. So if you have a live stream that's really important and you don't want to worry about the risk of those ads, uh, or you don't want you know your company to look bad, right. then maybe not rely on YouTube Live. And then the other thing, of course, is copyright restrictions, similar to Facebook Live, right. except they're more strict on YouTube Live yeah. than copyright. They just do a better job. So to give you an example, maybe you're streaming like a football game, and before the game they have that pre-game soundtrack to get everybody pumped up. Right. If you're streaming that audio and YouTube Live catches those audio waveforms, then they might take your stream down. Yeah, and th this has actually happened to BoxCast clients on YouTube, and we had some guy call in. He was doing a, a three-day tournament, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday, Saturday, no problems. Mm -hmm. Sunday, championship day, they're doing the pump-up music, the yeah. same thing they've been doing for two days, yeah. and YouTube took their whole feed down. Yeah. And they, like, I mean, they had a backup plan. They just had to direct people uh, to another place, yeah. but you could see how it makes you, like, look... <laughs> it kind of can make you look It kind of can make you look bad. So, not ideal. So the yeah. one thing we always recommend to people is to embed on your website whenever you can. We think that your website is probably the main hub uh, for your live stream, the place where you want it to live, the place where you're going to get the best right. viewership quality, especially if you're streaming through BoxCast Player. Yep. And uh, it's also going to drive more traffic to your website as well because when you embed videos on your website, that really helps with your website SEO. So if you can do that, you give yourself a better chance in those search rankings. Right. And to show you how easy it is to embed a BoxCast stream on your website. So he's jumping back to the I'm dashboard. I'm going to hop oh. back in the dashboard here. And we're just going to click this embed tab. And you can, you can you know, embed as many streams as you want. Uh, but what you have the ability to do in these settings is you can, um, Add a countdown timer right here, and you can add a pre-roll video, which is really nice. So if you have like a little, like if you're running ads before the stream, that's right. good for that. If I've seen pastors before give like messages to their audience before they go live, like, hey, thanks so much for tuning into our live stream. Here's what we're all about. Right. Just a nice place to drop a, a quick, maybe two to three minute MP4 video. Right. I've seen like hype hype videos for like oh, a yeah. sports team, like oh, basketball yeah. or wrestling. Like just yeah. a cool way to like tell to kind of get your viewers involved before the stream even starts. It's really good for that, too. Yeah. And then you can see this is how it might look on your website right here. Yeah. Um, so this right is now our current stream going on right. right now. And then below the player, they'll have the name, they'll have a description. And a lot of this you can customize and change around, too. But you can also look at past live events. So right now, this embed code has the two live streams we're running. But then it also will allow you to click around and look at other streams that you've done in the past, too. 
So that's a really nice feature to look at. And then, of course, the ability to search for videos in case you're live streaming every week and you have tons yep. and tons of weekly content. So that is embedding for you. What do we have left here? I think we're almost done. So thank you for hanging out. Oh, yeah, oh. let's just reiterate uh, the, the ingredients to a successful live stream. One, have a good internet connection. Let's just like summarize it here. Have a yep. good, strong internet connection. The internet is the lifeblood of your live stream. Without good internet, you're dead in the water. You're, you could have $100,000 worth of equipment, and if yeah. you have bad internet, yeah. it's going to be a bad yeah. live stream. That's just exactly. facts. Number so. two, have a quality video source that sends a clean video feed to your encoder. Um, you know, your camera is the thing. Your camera, your switcher, those are the things that are actually capturing the content. So if those are a weak chain, then it's going to affect the rest of, right? you know, or a weak link that, that pfft, sorry, those are going to affect the rest They're of gonna the chain. Affect, and I hear, here's a great <laughs> example of that, too. Like, we obviously have some switchers and stuff, and people from the support side always ask me, hey, we want to do two, three cameras with, like, one, yeah. of those, one of those HDMI switches that you have yeah. for, like, your TV. You know, where you plug your DVD player in, your cable box in, yeah. and something, your video game system. Yeah. Like, that will work, but every time you switch, it, like, cuts the feed out. Yeah. And it's like, so that's your weak link in your chain. So having a reliable video source is yeah. super, super important. <laughs> exactly. Um, so Number next three, thing. encoder. We recommend the Boxcaster. There's a lot of great options out there, but just make sure it's something that's not confusing and that you know how to use and will be a lot of fun to use. And then if you have volunteers in your organization, they're going to have a good time using it. Number four, you need a streaming service. We probably don't recommend you using a social media destination because of the right. reasons we explained before. So just find a streaming service that works really well for you. And then number five, last but not least, make sure people are watching at home because without viewers... Uh, Why are you live streaming? Right. Why are you live streaming? <laughs> so, so that's it. So now on to the live Q&A section. Let's hop into questions. Let's hop into it. And I think Kevin's going to queue us up some questions here. Let's see what we've got. So let's see what we got here. Question okay. number one. And thank you guys so much uh, before we get yeah, to oh. We got question number one here. So, um, <laughs> And they're appearing on a monitor right there. That's why I'm looking at this. Oh, so, I see. Uh, can you use a jetpack when out and about to live stream, I'm guessing? So, You can tackle this one. Yeah, I'll tackle this one because I do it quite a bit on the support side of things. So I'll say yes and no. If it's your last option, like it's the only thing you have available, then that's all you got available. So give it a try. Now, I've used jetpacks in the past, and they've worked well. Um, I've used jetpacks in the, I, I, I would say it's hit or miss. To sum it all up, it's really, really hit or miss. I mean, you're going to do live streams where they look great, and then you're going to go and to like another field or somewhere else where they don't look as good. Um, I know when we work with sports clients all the time, you know, maybe at their home stadium, the jetpack looks awesome. They're like, cool, we live streamed for three hours and had no issues. They go to, you know, a stadium that's an hour away, and it, it, they basically try to live stream something, and it just doesn't work at all. They're like, we can't even get our boxcaster online, or we can't even hook up to the internet. And it's like, that's what I mean by it's kind of hit or miss. So I would say always look for that hard line connection from the school, mm -hmm. or even I would almost maybe recommend a Wi-Fi connection from an organization before yeah. a jetpack. But it all kind of depends yeah. on the situation, to And be to, to another answer to that question, yeah. um, if it's not a Verizon jetpack, but it's a real jetpack that you can actually fly with, you can also use that <laughs> as well. We highly recommend you use jetpacks. If you start streaming jetpack stuff where you're flying in the air, we'll give you a free plan. We probably can't, <laughs> we probably can't do that. So anyway, next question. <laughs> next question. We've got coming from... Cool. It says... The Cool Kids. Nice. Uh, can I use cellular data for more rural areas like outdoor games? I'll tackle this Why again. Why don't you just go for that? So one? to piggyback off the jetpack thing, um, like a Verizon jetpack, the things that are kind of like this small, those are the things I kind of don't recommend. There are certain cellular devices uh, by a company called Pepwave or Peplink, maybe Peplink, Pepwave, where they allow you to actually take SIM cards from like Verizon, AT&T, uh, Sprint, and you mm -hmm. plug them into this device. They look like, like kind of a, your own mobile router, and they're way stronger to do when yeah. you're in these rural situations. So. Um, I would say, de once again, the hard thing with this yeah. is it depends on where you're at. It depends, it depends on, on yeah. what cellular company. Verizon is usually the best, then it goes like AT&T and from there on out. Yeah. But it really just depends. Um, do you have good cell service in that area in general? And right. If you do, then you probably will have a good chance right. of having a good live stream. If it's a rural area with bad cell service from any provider and they're just not providing good cell service, right. then you're kind of... I would You're say, yeah, for our talk. bigger clients, generally this is, applies to sports. Mm -hmm. um, they have like a pep, pep wave device that can take four SIM cards in it and they merge all those signals together so that 
your internet's like four times as strong. So hey, mm -hmm. if one, if Verizon's card doesn't really work for you, okay, well now you have two AT&T cards and you have a Sprint card. Like those three pick the slack up that time. So yeah. Um, once again, it is tricky, but if you have more questions about I that, think, definitely. I think shoot, another shoot thing email. worth mentioning. Yeah. Now that we're on this topic, sure. Is um, you know, we have a broadcaster app oh, where yeah. if yeah. you if you don't want to go through the hassle of having a separate camera and a separate encoder. We do have this broadcaster app. It's free with any BoxCast streaming plan. So not only can you stream from your BoxCaster, but you can stream with broadcaster as well. Right. Um, I can honestly say it's the highest quality live streaming app there is on the market. It uses HEVC compression. I'm confident in saying it's the yeah, highest live yeah. streaming it, app. You can stream in 1080p60 directly from any iOS device, and it's really efficient with your network. So if you are in a rural area yeah. with less, not as good cellular connections, this app will do a much better job than any Verizon Jetpack with a box. Caster. Right, and it's it's only for iPhone and Apple devices, like a, an iPad or an yeah. iPhone. But yeah. literally, if you have the ability to just take your iPhone, put it on a tripod, and stream stuff, like we have a ton of baseball clients right now, a ton of actually volley people who stream volleyball that just stream one camera, boom, it looks incredible. Yeah. We stream some of our yeah. basketball games in the morning, too, with our broadcaster app. Yeah, so give so. the app a shot and see, see what see you can what do. do. Yeah. The cool kids, I like the name, too, so, by the way. What's the next question here? We have. Let's see. Okay, I got you, Josh. With live stream, can I remove the card from the camera? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't. So, you, one, you don't need to have a. You don't technically need to be recording on your camera while you're live streaming with Boxcast. We recommend that you do in case something goes wrong with the live stream right. that you have a backup recording. But you don't need to have a card in the camera in order to do that because the camera is going to output a separate video feed to your encoder and you're going to be live streaming with that feed. Right. And while we're getting into this kind of topic, um, like Josh said, you don't need to hit record, the record button. It just automatically takes your feed. There are some camera settings, though, and, and some cameras that have this auto power off mode. So mm -hmm. essentially, they're, you know, the, the camera thinks, I'm not really doing anything. I'm just on. And yeah. it auto powers off after 10 minutes. Make sure you turn that off. And other, other cameras actually have something called demo mode. Make sure you turn that yeah. off because that will start playing like the camera ads. Yeah, yeah. And viewers will be like, why are you playing Sony ads? Like, it makes no sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you, I, I would say I'm with Josh. You must record your live streams no matter what it is. We're recording this one right now. Just in case our internet went down, we could still post this and share this with you guys. But recording that as a backup mm -hmm. just in case, hey, that baseball game in the rural area with your jetpack didn't work the way yeah. you wanted it, you yeah. can still upload it later. And if yeah. you choose BoxCast, you can upload it to BoxCast, right. see it on your site, all that good stuff. Right. So, Another thing worth cool. mentioning is we do record all of your um, live streams in the cloud. So once the event's over, like yeah. we mentioned previously, you can see here in the dashboard, oh. um, we have this past webinar we did. Once that live stream ends, once we end it, it's available for viewing right after the fact, which is nice in itself because then you don't have to wait to upload a really large video file to a, like some sort of service like YouTube. Viewers can just right. watch it instantly and right away. Yeah, I would say it takes literally no more than two minutes yeah. to, to get pretty quick. to like turn it around and be just available. Yeah. So, alrighty, hook us up with the next question, Quev. Whoa. Quev. Quavo. Kevin, <laughs> sorry. Quavin. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> what are you using to switch from from live stream to your computer screen for this presentation? So, great question. Uh, Kevin, do you want to maybe point it over at this box you over show here for the us? Behind the scenes. So we are using a Blackmagic ATEM. Um, it's kind of like the smaller two thirds rack mountable one. Oh yeah. yeah, perfect shot, Kevin. All right, let's do boom. So we are, and maybe you want to take that ga graphic down too for us, Kev. Um, give me a sec. Okay, cool. So as you can see, here's what I've been switching from the whole time. So I've just been clicking buttons to yeah. switch. So like here's our PowerPoint feed, and you can see it lights up green for preview, and I just hit the cut button, and I cut over to it, or I cut mm -hmm. over to here, or hey, I want to go to camera five, back to us. Um, I just hit the cut button, we're back here, and I hit the cut button again, we're back there. So we're using this setup here, Blackmagic ATEM, with the, uh, I think it's called the Blackmagic HyperDeck, Hyperdeck Studio. Studio Mini Recorder or something, mm -hmm. uh, which is recording on an SD card, which we really, really like. Um, this and stuff is a th comm That's system available and, in the yeah. kit site as well. So if you yep. go to the kit site, you can check out those recommendations. A lot of the stuff on that kit site is the stuff we use to produce. Yeah, and I would say the only reason we're Cameras, using this Cabling. Yeah. Converters. The only reason we're using this versus the roll in today mm -hmm. is um, it has SDI yep. outputs, which we won't really get into, but yeah. they can run longer cables than HDMI. They're a little more professional. Yep. And we're also sending an HDMI feed 
from, from the laptop, laptop to the switcher. Yep. And that's how you're getting cool. that. Any other questions there? Okay, what is the setup for multiple cameras into the Boxcaster? Uh, yeah, great, great question. Um, Why don't we just show them? Yep, perfect. Let's say let's say we're live switching with the Roland, right? Here, I got you on this camera. The setup here. will look exactly like this. Well, yep. I'll get an HDMI cable. Yep, let him get an HDMI cable. So basically, here we go. Let's do this. So the Roland here, if we were doing this, we would have a bunch of cameras plugged in. And we would have camera one, camera two, whatever. Um, here, and you need two HDMI cables, Josh, if you don't mind. Here's one here. Well, we get this set up. But basically, you want to do the program out feed of your ATEM switcher or your Roland switcher or whatever switcher you have, but you need to have some kind of switching device to do this. So let's see, if we had something plugged into camera one here, boom, like, oh, okay, that is our camera one, you know, here's camera two, awesome, and here's, you know, basically we're gonna send this output feed to BoxCast. So as you can see, we kind of started to build our setup over here. We've got camera one, camera two, and we output right to BoxCast. So this is going to output whatever we decide to switch to. Um, in our case with the ATEM yeah. over here, we're doing SDI to our BoxCaster Pro, which is in the corner over there. Um, but it's really simple. It, it's it, just simple. Show, yeah, maybe just show plugged into the box. Yeah, perfect. There. Let's do this. So we go, and we can actually probably put this back on this angle for us. And what you're going to do is take that program out Ooh. feed, like Josh said, and you're just going to stick it into the box. Now, this isn't turned on, so our, it's not going like, to create a green camera or anything like that. But, um, but as that's you, how it would essentially look. That's how it essentially it would look, yeah. Um, and you've got yeah two cameras. Maybe we can make this look better. Yeah. yeah. The camera. There, we <laughs> there we go. So yeah, I so <laughs> you kind of get it. Two cameras. Two output cameras, to the box caster. Two cameras coming in. Director switches between the two yep. cameras. One mixed video feed goes out over HDMI into the box caster. Right. And that's basically And I would happens. say if you have more questions about that, send an email to questions at boxcast.com, and me or another support rep would be able to help you out. If you're like, hey, I'm looking to buy this, that, this, that, like, just let us know, and we'd definitely be able to get on the phone and help you out. So Cool. All righty. Uh, I think we're getting the th three more questions. OK, cool. What camera do you recommend uh, we start with for multicam setup? So it depends what you're doing, but I would say you get um, a couple of these Canon. I would start with these. I yeah. mean, honestly, they work great. Yeah. You can you can send an HDMI video feed at least 50 feet at right. this point. I would start with the Canon Vixia. The quality is going to be great. You're going to if if you're on a budget. You're going to spend less money for more cameras and than if you buy. More and I think too, cameras. this is this is another one too where send us an email at questions at boxcast.com or josh.clements. You know, if you saw our stuff at the beginning, yeah. Send us an email with what your budget is, and we'd be happy to pick some stuff out for you that fits. Because yeah. if your budget's a thousand dollars, then this this camera's not going to cut it. If your yeah. budget's hey, we got a ten thousand dollar budget to do live streaming stuff, we want to deck it out with stuff you guys recommend, like. Mm -hmm. Let us, we'll build it all for you and tell you kind of how it works. I mean, you gotta, yeah. you do have to figure that I mean, out you yourself. Could, you could <laughs> eventually. mix and match a lot of different right. camera angles too. You could have a GoPro for like an on stage right. shot or a behind the scenes shot. You could have a couple of these set up with the GoPro. Right. So I guess it depends on the type of event you're trying to produce. But right. I don't, I think this, the HFG21 is a great way to start. It's a great starter camera too. Mm -hmm. So, but like I said, shoot us an email if you want more in depth. Yeah, well, we can, we can actually what we usually do is we figure out what your budget is and yeah. then we give you the best recommendation considering the type of live streaming you're yeah, doing. Yeah, or what you're doing too. So, mm -hmm. Alrighty, let's see that next one. This one's from the Cleveland Diocese. Oh. How nope, do we... nope, it's from Cecil Wade. Sorry, oh. <laughs> I was in the wrong order. Cecil Wade. Okay, from yeah. Cecil Wade. Yeah, uh, how do we wirelessly get the camera's HDMI output to the mixer or boxcaster? Um, Another great question. So there are, you can buy, you can purchase separate HDMI wireless transmitters, and uh, we will uh, actually, wh why don't you explain that, and I'll find a good pair, yeah. and we'll post it in the chat. I was thinking the Holly Land one. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. there's this company, I think it's called Holly Land. They just came out with a pair of HDMI tra wireless transmitters, oh, where basically wow. you plug it into your camera, you plug one end into the box, and I think they can go up to like 300 feet or something, and they're only like four or 500 bucks, which sounds like a lot of money for a wireless transmitter, but 
The, now you have to be careful the, with wireless. Yeah, the obviously... super, super nice ones are like two grand. I yeah. mean, they're super, like, there's one, I think it's Cinei is the one brand that I really like. Yeah. And they're like 1500 to two grand. Usually we rent them mm -hmm. <laughs> from a company called Lens Rentals uh, if we need it. But uh, let's see. Here's a link Josh... to that. Oh, Josh just posted a link in the description for that, what he was talking about. So dive into that chat box and uh, you'll be able to find wireless. it. Wireless. But Kevin, let's hear the last one, it sounds like. Is this one from the Cle Cleveland Diocese? Yay! Hey, what's up? Okay. We're in Cleveland. Yeah. Um, okay, so how do you get a good, clean start? I noticed some issues before clicking start and when I go live. So this is what I tell clients, um, is to get the cleanest start possible, put a graphic up to start, because I'll be complete, you know, basically, with the Boxcaster, it doesn't have a start button. It doesn't have, like, a go now button. Um, it starts taking in data like you know right at basically the time of the live stream but what like what you kind of saw what we did we just threw a video up here i'll put it up again um oh yeah we run a little 30 second we run a little oh that's josh's computer there we go we run a little 30 second we it's like a four minute long video mm -hmm. we just run this video beforehand and then we know hey we're live we're ready to go the stream started i run into another room i check did youtube start mm -hmm. i make sure everything's good to go and then as you guys kind of saw, me and Josh's cue is this countdown that we do. So it's this, you know, seven, six, five. And then that's when you kind of see us, you know, we cut back to, hey, we're here. And you now know? we're live. And then that's how you can guarantee a real-time start. Yeah. And it also gives your viewers some more engaging stuff to look at before you just do the hard, hey, we're live type yeah. of thing. Yeah, and we also, it warms you up something we didn't better. get into today is when we do have a graphic overlays option where you could just uh, you put a, a graphic up, like a picture, um, that just says like, hey, we'll be getting shortly, or we'll be starting shortly, and then you know, for your safety net, it's like, hey, it hit 10 o'clock when we were supposed to start. It's now 10:01. They've been seeing that graphic for about a minute. Cut the graphic away and let's go live. Um, that's, mm -hmm. in my opinion, the that the easiest way to do it for starting. Um, besides, if you're in a huge auditorium and you just do like a general wide shot. Right. So. Right. Cool. So I think that's all the questions we have today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We really appreciate you taking the time yeah. to listen to our little spiel about live streaming. I know we love we love to talk cameras. So we could we talk just, about this we could talk day. about they could sit us here till five o'clock and we could just keep talking. We literally <laughs> could. And so if you do ha if you want to get in more in depth discussions, uh, feel free to reach out to us at questions at boxcast.com or you could reach out reach out to us personally um, with our personal emails as well. Um, but I think that's it. I yeah. think that's it. Maybe. And if maybe... you're talking about now, so from starting it, how do we end this? Because uh, we just don't want to think... unplug everything. So I'll show you how. So we basically have the video rolling on my computer. And then I'm just going to turn that audio on, turn my audio off, and we're going to go. And so... I'm going to hit the hip hop horn. And if you want to hit the fade to black, and then we can mute our mics. And then we'll just do that. All right. See you guys. You Thank you so Bye. much. Bye.